Good evening, afternoon, morning, or wherever you are on this beautiful planet called Earth. This is Rebecca Jernigan coming to you live from the heart of America to around the globe via the World Wide Web. And we're journeying into the realms of the known and the unknown. You're listening and watching Journeys with Rebecca on Project Camelot TV Network. It's good to be back, everyone. But before we get into the show and my fabulous guest and topic tonight, I want to take in this moment here and publicly thank my producer, engineer, Brian, for the tremendous amount of work and creativity he did into pre-production and obviously the production of this show and all the others he's done from before this. Um, he's just really appreciated, so I just wanted to let him know that publicly. So thank you, Brian. And I also want to take a moment here and say thank you to all of you beautiful people out there who supported me and all the wonderful emails and support that you showed me in the absence, in my absence here in the last few months while I was recovering and I'm still continuing to recover and I'm feeling way better and I thank you for all the heartfelt messages and the energy and the abundance of it it was really moving and humbling and it's so wonderful to be back and I'm so grateful to each and every one of you and I'm really more excited as well to be back to be back in the saddle as they say because tonight I have some fabulous guests um, the return guest and you have heard them on here uh, several times uh, Jack and Tobias uh, they've previously discussed they've demonstrated several ancient and modern ET languages which they speak fluently I might add a practice that plays significant roles in understanding and accessing information from our ancient past uh, we're gonna get into those topics really in depth tonight uh, we're gonna try to keep the show at about 90 minutes but have no fear uh, we've already talked even before the show began about having them back on again um, a little bit more frequently because this this topic has so many legs and so many avenues that it can go down and so much more perspective that we can take on it that it starts opening up different arenas of discovery and understanding and so tonight they're going to be bringing uh, an, an awful lot of that information about their continuing studies and real life applications of such systems and I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing this right and I'm sure that's Tobias or Jack will, will um, correct me if I'm wrong uh, Takashik the powerful source that was the basis for all the Anunnaki technologies that they have relearned for modern day uses well, I mean just really fantastic from the language of the gods to the powerful Takashik what else was lost to the past will be rediscovered today so this is just going to be a fabulous show and I'm really really glad that they're both going to be on uh, and talking about this so I want to welcome each and I want to welcome each of you Jack and Tobias to the show hi guys how's everyone hi Rebecca doing great thank you doing great well and welcome back welcome oh. back to you Rebecca and thanks for having us back well, you know, I have to be really careful because we had a little emotional stuff going on before the show, and I mm -hmm. promised myself that I wouldn't, I wouldn't get all funnified here for everyone and get too emotional. But thank you so much. So let's let's, um, you know, first of all, we have to tell everyone is that uh, the the couple times that Jack's been on, he does have has had a, a little bit of uh, video issues. We we think we may have them mostly worked out tonight. We do have some game plans um, for if his video does get a little wonky, some of the different things that he can do to so that we can keep him on the show so that we can have continuity of the show for tonight, um, which is why we're probably only going to try, we're going to try to keep it at about 90 minutes so that hopefully, yeah, there you go, that's right, Jack, so hopefully, keeping our fingers crossed, we'll have a nice uh, continuous flow tonight. Um, and I know that the two of you um, work you, you guys have an interesting um, kind of dynamic on how you work together um, when I sit back in observation mode and watch the two of you as you're communicating back and forth regardless of whether you're talking in the English language or any other um, you you both know when it is that you're supposed to speak and who speaks and which direction this goes in it's it's a very fascinating dynamic 
first of all. So I wanted to let you know that I noticed that, and I hope that the audience can get pick up on some of these subtleties because that's part of what we're going to be talking about uh, to some extent tonight is about some of the subtleties that's all around us. So maybe yeah, I don't know which one of you decided to talk a little bit uh, tonight about like kind of recapping where we were at so that we can move into the newer things that you are you're both working on. Sure. Well, you know, we've um, had had a, the great opportunity to spend uh, twice now with you and explain how it all began for for us and the processes that we went through with the languages and and uh, and since last year and having these opportunities to to get it out and in the ways that we have and, and share it with other people and get the feedback from people from all over the world. Um, one of the most common questions is, well, how can I do that, right? So we've talked about, you know, our experiences for, for quite a bit of the time when we've been discussing it with you and the audience, um, but there's so many aspects of it prior to what happened um, with us regaining these abilities and, and then after, since then. So this was really only the start. This is the, the one thing that, that really is a, a big deal because it's, a, it's to us uh, as the experiencers, so to speak, it's the big hello. It's like, oh wow, I, I actually access something and I understand what's going on and then comes the information from it, uh, the information through your own past and, and it builds upon it. Um, but the processes that we've studied since the languages uh, are really the, the thing that we'd like to get to tonight and, and hopefully give the audience and other people um, some real um, understanding and insights into the processes of the subconscious mind, how we are accessing certain things and, and how that applies to so many other things that, that you know, some people talk about all of the time with these types of uh, subjects. You know, um, before we let, we got a back feed again. I don't know where that comes from. Every once in a while that comes up, that back feed. Um, but I will say this, is that tonight when we were getting prepared for the show, we were talking and I shared with you just a little small piece of information about some of the, you know, I haven't just been sitting around for five or six months. There's been a lot going on in my little brain, in my little world, in my little metaphysical space, you know, that I deal with. And... You know, you guys have been a tremendous help with me picking out some subtleties in my own life that I hadn't really, really understood that what I was doing was picking up on languages that I didn't really know consciously, but obviously somewhere I did because I was able to translate that pieces of information into English into my brain so that I understood what it was I was looking at. So that's what we're going to be talking about is real life applications how certain things trigger certain things and you go wow I knew that and didn't know I knew that so this is how you're going to go with this journey so I don't know which one of you guys is going to start um, which one of you guys is going to start with either the recap or, or going forward or you guys are going to give us another oh don't forget you do need to give us a little mm, a little back and forth just so we can get caught up again to get back into that language kind of mm -hmm. energy so an exchange between you and Tobias will or you and Jack would be great Tobias. Sure let's do it because uh, we can do it at the beginning here is probably a great clean, idea. Boys. <laughs> sure let's uh, you know one of the languages that's really common um, from the past is, is the main Lemurian language and uh, it's something that we uh, get from other people a lot of the time and they talk about it um, and describe it as a light language um, it is a literal language, uh, just like we would use English or, or Spanish or anything of the modern modern world. And one of the things that Jack and I were talking about just uh, last night, actually, uh, when we were talking about what we discussed tonight, was the fact that we could talk these languages all day long, literally. So we're not using the languages um, um, non-consciously. We, we do use these languages in our studies and our research and our exchanges with one another all of all of the time it's really helpful so this is uh, just an example of the Lemurian language mm. yes I agree but Savanaha 
And where would you put that, Tobias? Well, she ya bakala batita na bakadita makoi ya ya honte bikita makala kui. That's right. The ant would move the rubber to your plant. Well, she ya. So that is the Lemurian language, and of course, as you know, if you've heard us talking on any of the other shows, we like to dive each other and, and uh, enjoy ourselves as we're doing these things. But yeah, that's just an example. Well, you know, it's a very, um, it's a very, the dialect itself is very beautiful. It has a, uh, obviously everything has a resonance to it, right? It has an energy field, a feeling. Uh, and by the way, for some people, when they hear some of these dialects that you speak or some of the languages that you speak, it might rub them the wrong way. And yeah. I want to I caution people right now that if they're listening to anything that you guys say in a different language and it doesn't set well, it probably has something to do with a subconscious memory that they haven't pulled forward that was rather maybe it could have been an unpleasant experience for them uh, in that time space. That's exactly right because um, one of the things that we do assure of the, everybody listening is we're just being ourselves and, and the, the things even if you don't understand what we're saying word for word the things we're saying are just very you know honest natural everyday things there's nothing harmful in it whatsoever but as Rebecca as you just said absolutely they they can be triggers to the past even subconsciously in people's minds to experiences they've had and and it depends on the languages and the individuals so that's a very important part of that and again obviously the two of you resonated very well with those languages because you speak them both very fluently and uh, even though I didn't completely understand by listening to the exchange you can almost get an idea of what somebody's talking about in generalizations obviously not specifics maybe so much but at least a generalization and I think that's important for people to observe as well as to hear uh, you know, to use a lot of senses besides just listening to it audially, but is also to feel it, um, and then to watch how the two of you interact with each other, because everybody can see the cameras, can see the two of you in the bottom of their screen as well. So they can kind of mm -hmm. see how the eyes are and how the how the two of you kind of you know click in. It's it's really fascinating. I didn't mean to take up all this time, but I'm just like being in this observation mode now, and I'm like, wow, that's okay. I'm mm -hmm. Click, 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 lots of clicking going on. I love it. That's what all it's right. all about. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so, totally. And I, I keep wanting to respond to you in Lemurian, but I won't. Oh, go right ahead. I, even though I wouldn't understand it, I'd probably laugh about it anyway or smile at it <laughs> nonetheless. No, although nobody, I do want to say to everybody, I actually do not have a camera at all. My camera is broken. And I will get it fixed, so it's not a, just an excuse because <laughs> I didn't want to be on camera. I really do not have a camera. My camera broke, so I dropped it one too many times. <laughs> so that being said, I will get a new camera. But until then, you just have to put up with the picture that shows up. Kind of still looks like me. <laughs> anyway, uh, so, okay, so that was the Lemurian language. Give us uh, one or two more little short examples and then um, go into whatever else you kind of want to wrap up about where you guys have been with, with me on the show. And then we'll begin with some of the newer discoveries because that's really the most important part because people can go back and mm. listen to the shows. They're, yeah. they're, they're right here on YouTube. So if they missed anything, um, it's okay. They can go back and watch it and then come back and watch this one again as well. So go ahead. Exactly. Yeah, starting off so quickly and getting right into the languages as we are tonight, um, I would say the yes. same thing. I would urge people to go back to the, to the last two presentations we made on your show. Perfect idea because the, the whole background and history is there. So, yeah, let's jump into it. Sibika na bakalante, honta la bakita. Teratata sila bakanda pagida bontusta haya ikana bakoi yaya yaya sabuku na shu rek nishi kisran hibon ashu tavo na kai la to na sa tavo hishi kena subunak sobana hala to na shi na baka oh yeah boy sipi kana kalabos to bedita on batala kala kurndita kalabatus to maka yatana bakoi yaya so that's an <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 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 Yeah, 
Tudod, tehát a kellőkor is napot tartál. <laughs> okay, we'll just stop there, but yeah. You have to just, share. You cannot just leave us all Jack, hanging now. Well, I'll let Jack put that into the, the right way. Me? Oh, we, we want to hear you translate a little bit, Tobias. Yeah, sepukul le bánta a gitar boy. All right, so what the illustrious Tobias was trying to tell us is that again we're just we're very excited to be here and we we really we were actually recapping the show in Lemurian so anyone that can catch that you're doing good but all right, so basically what Tobias was discussing is what a lot of what we did in the last show and we were talking a lot about how the the left brain is trying to over dominate the right brain and most of the abilities that we're using is just like remembering things. It's almost like through visions and dreams and, you know, wispy audio, like something whispering in your ear. And you, you get these experiences and then it manifests into language. But you basically just have to allow yourself to, you know, to flow and to do things. It's like a lot of the times we'll do things and we just kind of go into, you know, a slight calm state and then we start doing things. And then we basically open our eyes and we've, you know, we've done something. And we've done different, you know, like mudras, something of that effect. And we say, oh, this is something. And then you get flashbacks and you see images and people. And so which I responded as well, yes, I mean, entirely. Everything that we do here is basically based upon the passions and your creativity and the way that you that you get into that is just by allowing yourself to create and the best creators are children and they'll sit there in their sandbox and they'll they'll make little little castles with sand they'll damp it down and they'll, they'll build this thing up and that's their castle and they make the little people and then you have the princess and you have the you have the king and you know the prince and all that and that's exactly what we're going through. So you have to go into that mental state mentally. So you have to unleash your inner child. And that's where you get all the fun stuff. And that's where Tobias responded and said, yes, you need to play around like a little kid with those little little Tonka toy. And you need to you know, drop back and make little angels and stuff. And then you realize you, know, you were talking with the angels or you know, with these celestial looking beings, however you might look into it and it was something of your past and you know however you can take that I mean the, the way that you can that you can conceptualize this and you know kinda of keep yourself feeling as if you're staying is just to play like a child it's like oh, okay that's cool and then you just experience it and then you move on and which I uh, which I came back is saying it's like well yes and that's exactly right and uh, we just need to have as much fun as possible while keeping it acceptable for the audience. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely, because that's the thing. And we've talked about it before in different, in different ways, the fact that, um, honestly, the, the way our world, our, our belief systems, our experiences, our society, honestly, I won't get too deeply into it tonight because we've already been there, but the way things are set up, it can be very, very difficult to break outside of the norm, um, not just you know, with the way you look or the things that you do or like, but the things that you think. Um, so it can be a very big challenge for people to get to the point that Jack was just uh, describing and act, act like a child, at least within yourself, feel like a child. Most people honestly and sadly don't even remember anymore what it feels like to, to, to express the, themselves with an abandon, like a real abandon. And so, I mean, I mean some people, um, you know, on one, from one perspective, a lot of people will look at the these ancient languages um, and think they're very sacred. And while they are, and certainly they are to us, um, uh, at the same time, it's very important for us to allow ourselves to be free and open and just experience with it without judgment. And you know what? Honestly, if we hadn't done that from the very beginning, um, we would never have got to the point where we are actually using these languages like any other language in the modern world. So it's so important. Okay, so I'm going to throw my two cents in here because the last thing that you said there just really, um, I'm being kind of guided to to 
uh, go a little bit more in depth with that about the languages being sacred. I think all language is sacred in its own right because it is a way that we communicate. Um, and so we have to be very careful about how we use that language, especially when we're using it towards another, right? But if you get, if you put something like such as a language or anything up on a pedestal and treat it as if it was an object that you needed to proselytize yourself for, you're not getting it. You're not absorbing it. You're not understanding it. You're not owning it. You're not enjoying it. You're not a part of it. It becomes something separate from yourself. And that's not what language is. Language is an expression of how we feel, what we want to say, what we want to communicate, um, what we want somebody else to know, sometimes what we don't want them to know, and it comes out of our mouth anyway. <laughs> it's, a, it's a way to show and share truths, to share beliefs, to share information. So if you put your languages, any language, up on a pedestal and you treat it as if it was an object, you lose the very point behind the reason why we communicate verbally. Just my opinion. And there's two. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Very well said, Rebecca. And you I know, didn't say that, but thank you. Yeah, that was fantastic. And the thing is, I mean, um, and the other th at the other end of the scale, sometimes people can actually um, not give it enough credit. It's it's very it's a very strange thing because um, one of the things that 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 we've experienced in the last year, especially coming out with uh, what we have publicly, um, a lot of people are under the the belief that when it comes to these languages that a lot of people are channeling or or speaking, that they actually can't be translated into into real things, that they are just feelings or concepts or ideas. Um, but I'm telling you, I, I have to repeat it myself again if I have said it before, the fact is these are very real languages. Um, the majority of the time that we, we hear from others, and, and this is a daily thing, um, from other people around the world that are speaking or channeling these languages, the majority of the time, the language is mostly Lemurian. That is one of the most common, or if the most common language that we hear for sure. And, 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 and there's several other languages, uh, some that we don't even know, um, but that we get presented to us. But the fact is that these languages um, that we speak, every one is just as meaningful word for word and nuance to nuance is in, as any other um, modern language. So yes, absolutely, it is more than concepts and ideas, although those are a part of it. Um, the whole thing forms to create the understanding. So um, just like I'm expressing to all of you right now in English, and you know exactly what I'm talking about, every single language that Jack and I speak with one another, we are expressing the same specific types of information in, in the same way. Um, mind you, I will say um, that the ancient languages are much more robust and they have much more information attached even to a single word. Right, um, there's, right. there's many times um, uh, when uh, a single word uh, or phrase uh, could actually mean um, several different things just depending on the way you say it or what's attached to it on either end, that type of thing. But um, the biggest thing I wanted to express here is the fact that, yeah, I mean, I just really want people to understand that a lot of time when they think they're light languages that don't really mean anything um, specific, they are absolutely um, talking very specific things. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about everybody's Lemurian language. Uh, the most, mostly that's what people are speaking. Um, do you attribute that, do you or Jack either want to attribute that to uh, the fact that that was obviously the language uh, in if you want to talk about timelines, it's closest to the uh, existence of of our humans that are here now. That that that's the most recent overall language that was spoken on this planet. Um, prior to us being messed with, <laughs> for the lack of a better way of saying it, prior to the pre days of Babylon. 
Are you question. understanding yeah. where I'm going with that? Yeah. Okay. Maybe 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 tonight's show isn't the night for that. But if if not, mm -hmm. I will table it for the next one because I'd love to get down into that rabbit hole. No, I'd love to hear Jack talking about that. All right. Well, the the Lemurian. I mean, exactly. It's like, well, how far back do you want to go to? And some people oh. have different ideas. But from from what I remember is that this planet was like a truck stop. So people would, would come here and stop and basically refuel and there would be trade. So what what spawned out of that was this trade language and it was a it, it evolved over time into a conglomerate of different languages, which is a lot of what English is really, because English has roots in like German, Latin and there's French words that have Greek. gone into there. It's all kinds of things. And Greek, that's right. I mean there's lots and lots of languages and that's a lot of how Lemurian is. And even today, English is more of a, it is very much a trade language, and it's becoming more and more. Because you have people learning in the Philippines, they're not, like they, they learn Tagalog, they also learn English. Well, you have people in China, well, they're learning Chinese, but they're also learning English. Because English is becoming a very large trade language. Well, Lemurian was very much the same thing in this respect, it was similar to English of its time. It was a trade language. So all these languages eventually, because you would have these different species and you know they're trying to they're trying to mouth that language. So what happens is that whatever sounded the closest to what they were saying, that was a completely different word that they could identify, was fused into that language. And then over time uh, that came up into a living stream, a living language. And as a living language is, you know, it changes over time. I would say that in the beginning, from everything that I've seen, what we've researched, uh, this this Earth was basically like a truck a truck stop, where all different kinds of aliens mingled. You know, just like Star Wars, where you have the bar scene. This planet was the bar. Right, right. I get that. That's how it came to be. I get that. No, I get that. At one point, I have to agree with you that that was exactly what I think was going on here as well. As, um, I think it was pre-Atlantean days, what they called at the time of Atlantis, but that's my personal opinion, just for my own personal journeying, shall we say. So, yeah, I, I get that. That's uh, that's a good thing. Okay, so um, we've 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 talked about the Lemurian language as being kind of the the head honcho, so to speak. Um, I did notice between the two of you, by the way, the differences in the dialect. Now, obviously, I don't understand verbatim the words that you're using, but I'm listening to him, and I'm listening to you, and I can hear the subtle differences in the languages that you're speaking and the language that you're speaking, and it really is just the basis of dialect. Um, as an example, you have uh, you have the English language, but then you they speak English in the UK. They also speak English in... Uh, Australia they speak English in Canada but if you listen to each of those places as a general geographical area speaking the English language it's very different um, their enunciations of words the way how they place those words um, and so you can be speaking English all of you understand each other but yet there is still a slight translation that has to take place because the dialect is slightly different. Just like Spanish is different than the people that come from Mexico Spanish that they speak. Wow, um, you, you hit the nail right on the head, Rebecca. Um, you're, you're probably the first person that has been able to you know, enunciate that so well. That's exactly what's happening. And, and I think maybe, it's hard for me to tell because I'm used to listening to Jack responding all of the time, but I think... <laughs> If you listen, <laughs> if you listen to uh, us talking, that I'm probably the one that people refer to as sounding more Russian, um, even than the the accent that Jack uses. I'll sort of leave that out there for whatever people think. But but it's it's interesting to me because whether I'm speaking the Lemurian language or different dialects or the Anunnaki language. Um, mm -hmm. I'm still using. I still have the same accent. I don't know if people can pick that up, but um, we'll see. I guess if we if we speak some other languages. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I can certainly hear it, and and yours is is a, is, yes, it has a slight almost Russian connotation to it. I have to agree with that. 
that the only people that, sorry Rebecca the only people that say that don't say I sound Russian are Russian speakers of course but well of course there you go because <laughs> you sound natural to them it's all mm -hmm. they sound so hey it's all natural right mm -hmm. um, and and I will tell you is in and this is just stuff has nothing to do with what you're doing mm -hmm. you come from a different bloodline of the Lumerian speaking people than Jack did mm -hmm. so Jack came from a different bloodline than you did in regards to your physical incarnations and so you both have different past experiences that would attribute to the different dialects mm -hmm. so it's like your walks of life were very different from each other yeah absolutely and that's something else that is very difficult for people to conceive any of us any of us to conceive of is the the fact that when you take time um, or a time period I mean the immensity of time itself is so vast that we can barely even begin to understand what has happened when has happened and the cycles of things um, many things have repeated over and over and different types of cycles have gone by so yeah there's differences not just from what we conceive of as our 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 history our our, our recent existence there's things that go back so much further than than really any of us can imagine that contribute to to our real lives today and not just with respect to the languages or the accents or things like that but to the things we feel the things that we like the things that um, are important to us and and the things we strive for and crave so the past is really important so in regards to some of the languages that you all fluently speak you know verbally out loud with each other in conversation um, languages can be also attributed to um, a, a, you know I talked about trigger events earlier you guys talked about that a little bit so in your opinion and and again I'm I'm kind of outside of the box here tonight um, and Jack I want to hear from you first in regards to this do you find a specific language more healing when people listen to it or you speak it and you understand what I mean by healing healing is not necessarily mean somebody's sick but if somebody's in distress um, they're stressed out um, they're uh, anxiety ridden um, they can also be just over the top with emotion which is not a negative maybe they're just extremely happy but they can't contain themselves you you know people like that that they get almost out of order so when you think about language in that way and how you have seen it um, it how you've seen the people who are listening to it react what would you think in your knowledge at this present time would be the most healing language that somebody could listen to other than obviously our English language or what's spoken on the earth plane that we're familiar with well the Lemurian language because it's a conglomerate with all the different species some of them are very much more healing but I would even go further to recap little bit on our last show that we did is we were explaining that a lot of times we'll be speaking the same language but it will come across differently and some of our inflections are a little bit different in the timing of our speech well I mean just like when, when a person's you know kind of angry and haughty you know they go <laughs> and kind of like that and then when a person's you know really laid back they're like oh yeah mm, yes you know kind of at this peace state and it's the same thing with these languages too so, and even furthermore, because there's a lot more activity going on in your brain, especially the right brain, these people were literally going in and out of meditative states when they, when they did different things. They're speaking about different subjects. So, because when they were thinking about different subjects, they're also sending information, both, you know, you know like telepathy, like picting. It's like someone, they, they give visual references, like me and Tobias will be speaking. And sometimes we catch glimpses of things in our heads because like, oh, I'm talking about this field. And like even before he really understood that, he was saying, oh, he sees a field with this rolling planes and stuff. And it's just like that. But to, to answer about the healing, I mean, you know, of course, any language can be a healing language. It's really your intent. 
And I think that's the most important thing is that your intent because you can swear someone out in any language. You can say, <laughs> I love you in any language. And as long as it's heartfelt, then that can be healing or take away from, you know, their spiritual essence, you know, that makes them, you know, just shell. So like, if I were to give an example in Lemurian, because there's so many different things, so if I wanted to do something really angry, it's just like, Manakuyata, Shavuka, Hanakishiti, Rahana, Lubanana. See, it doesn't make you feel very good. But if I come and say, Oh, Namashina, Kinaha, Lishibuna, Kanawai, Kanawai, oh. See, <laughs> that's Lemurian. <laughs> exactly, it's how you say it. Okay, well, I enjoyed that. <laughs> I enjoyed that. That was cute. That was good. I like that. Okay, so we got a little bit off of your 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 uh, kind of focus for tonight. I didn't mean to do that, but boy, some stuff came in. I just had to do that. Um, oh, we we love when that happens, Rebecca. And I keep interrupting you, but that's okay because we can go with that flow too. Dude. Um, I, <laughs> I was just going to say that that's the, that's the thing too that you sort of touched on earlier with the question that you guys were just answering was really the fact that it depends also on your past experiences. Even if you don't remember them, your subconscious memories or things that are still there that will cause your body to physiologically react to the languages, even if your your conscious mind doesn't know what's being said or, or even knows that you have an experience with that. So like Jack was explaining there, I mean, uh, uh, to, to even expound on that a bit further, if a person has uh, good experiences with Lemurian people, then they're going to feel it's more healing and natural. But then if they've had um, negative experiences, for example, with the Anunnaki, um, then when they hear, you know, they might get very upset, right? So it's just I don't think what you said was very nice, was it? Well, you know what? It's not that it wasn't nice. It's it was just your delivery it, of it wasn't very nice. Let's put well, it that way. It's, you know what? It's <laughs> that's a whole other subject because honestly, even the delivery is just that is actually the natural way. That is the natural way of the language and the people. So it's not that that's even a aggressive. negative. Thing. Well, yeah, I would say that that, that is aggressive. But because it is, is it's, it's in your face. It, yeah. it's they want to be heard when they speak. That's right. Yeah. And, yeah. I mean, that's like somebody getting in my face. I was seriously. I'm right. like, man. I even mm -hmm. sat here in the chair and went back in my chair. It's like, okay. Wow. I don't yeah, like see, that. See, it's 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 see, easier. See, I get you. You get triggered. That's it's that, easier that's, for you to explain that. Easier for you to explain it than it is me because I I'm so used to it. I can't even almost perceive of it. Well, see, when you when you and again, I don't know what you said. It didn't feel nice to me. Mm -hmm. And you know that's why I said I don't think that was very nice. Mm -hmm. And I would have said that to you had I known how to respond in Lemurian, but I did not. Mm -hmm. And I said that's not very nice. I probably would have said it in just the same tonal quality that you delivered it to. Mm -hmm. So you know I'm I'm running a scenario here by you, right? It's interesting because when you were when you were speaking to me, I did. I started sitting back in the chair because you know that just set my little hackles on in, and I thought you know what, don't talk to me like that. <laughs> You know, let's just, do a little bit of an experiment here. Let me uh -oh. speak in let me speak in the Anu language and let me say something very specific and I will change my intonation. Um if I can, I think I can. Let's just do a, a little experiment and see how it feels. Um let me think of what to say. Okay. So here it goes. Rebecca Kuluk did that feel any different? Well, you know what that did is made me look at you very, very intently, and I still didn't have very nice feelings towards you. Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> okay. Yeah. What did you say to me? I was. I said, Rebecca, I'm. I. I'm trying to put it into English now. It was basically um, saying, Rebecca, don't. Don't feel poorly because, in actuality, I care about you. That was said. I didn't a, like it at all. Right. Hmm? I did not like it at all. I was like, you know, I was listening very intently, and I did not like that at all. So there must be something about that. See, I'm that language is not setting well with me. 
Mm-hmm. Obviously, I haven't had good experiences with the Anunnaki. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> I think that's quite common. Friends. Mm-hmm. So, you know, like, okay, so let's take a look at that. Here we are in modern day world. Mm-hmm. And you've done something terrible to me repeatedly, repeatedly, repeatedly. And you come to me and you say, oh, I, you know, I just want to let you know how, you know, badly I feel about everything, blah, blah, blah. I really like you, blah, blah, blah. I would still probably have the same kind of reaction going because I don't trust you anymore. It was about I didn't trust what come out of your mouth. Right, yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. So you've been so uh, acc- acclimated to the fact that everything that comes out of a person's mouth is negative and, and, and makes you feel poorly intentionally or what for whatever reason. Yeah. Even when something nice is said, it doesn't have the flavor and the spirit of what's being said. Right. right. So in this case, because I stepped aside, I made them step aside so it was just me standing here mm-hmm. listening to you. And that was how I felt. So now, like, that tells me I've got some work to do. <laughs> I've got some negative stuff i got to get rid of. <laughs> because, obviously, you did not mean any ill intent by any of that. It was it was something kind, but I didn't enjoy it. Exactly. Yeah. Now, it wasn't you, Tobias. It was what was being spoken. Mm-hmm. Your face would, didn't exist there, by the way. Right, when, I understand. When you were speaking. Yeah. So, just so we're, just so the audience knows, that personal. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, fascinating. See, this is discovery. Well, yeah. Where else but your show and Project Camelot will people hear any of this, honestly? Yeah. yeah this is discovery. So mm-hmm. this is to let people know that we all have a lot of work to do, and it's not incomprehensible to get the work done. It's not. Um, yeah. It does tell us a little me. bit about our past, right, Jack? Go ahead. Yeah, and let me add there is that a lot of people talk about things that they carry over from like a past life. So this reaction, I mean, the Anu language, I mean, they usually are looking at you like this, like they're back to work. They're like your boss. But, I mean, that stuff does carry over. I mean, you could be sitting here and you've never had that experience. Uh, they'll say, like, you're, well, you're a new soul. I mean, you, you, ha- you haven't experienced those people at least. So you don't necessarily have that. Some people feel overjoyed when they hear that. So, but again, it would have to be your your experiences back then. So we're here talking to you live, because you know, of course, it's not rehearsed. It's just r- direct. We talk about that, and you're like, like this. Oh, well, I didn't like what you said. I don't trust what you said because of how you said it. Well, I would say a lot of that too is not just what Tobias said, but probably experiences that you had in the past with someone that talked with a very similar inflection that you didn't like too much or that didn't like you too much. And that, that just 100% was, like even what we talked about in the last thing, it's like, well, just listen to what we said and tell us how it makes you feel. Because a lot of this language is more feelings and it's much more direct. I agreed. And one of the so, things, yeah, one of the things, Jack, that you probably don't know about me is that's one of the things that I do teach is the past life, how people can access their past lives. I teach classes on that. And um, I myself have went through past lives, many of them, to clear the trauma, clear... We bring stuff in with this. It's part of our genetic makeup. It's part of our DNA. Because we're a compilation of every place we've ever been. That's why we have memories that are only accessible during certain aspects of of whatever we're doing, right? So if people are having reactions to these, these conversations that the two of you are having... Or like Tobias giving me information, you know, talking to me and having reactions, then that tells them that they're they're subconsciously that they have something there that they need to go in and look at. For me, I have to go back and I'm gonna be I'm gonna be really honest here, Tobias, it's the first you've ever heard of this as well. I know that there's been some Anunnaki stuff in my past and mm-hmm. I have been the petulant child and put my foot down and said, I'm not looking at it. I'm not doing it. I don't have to. Mm -hmm. And so tonight shows me that I need to. It's fascinating, yeah. I think uh, for most people, there'd be, if not Anunnaki history, um, everybody has a history, and there's things we do have to deal with. Yeah. Um, It is fascinating um, hearing, because, you know, a lot of people, as you you do um, yourself in your own practice, Rebecca, 
the regressions are types of things in, in the past life, uh, uh, things that you are able to, to sort of lead people through and back to and get information from. Um, that's something that was really prominent and still is for, for the languages when they came out of myself and I know for Jack as well. So Jack already alluded tonight to the fact that when we are speaking these languages, in many cases we have um, pictures go through our heads or images or um, of videos, some would call it. Um, and other times we actually have, have, have more robust understanding of a, a certain topic or or a thing that we're discussing, and that's because it's attached to all of this. So um, I always say, or I often say to people, um, it's so important, so very important to know where you've come from and to know your past. Um, there's so much information there from the health of your body to, to why certain things are, are, are happening to you in your life. Um, there's just no end to it. So when people People say uh, sometimes, oh, well, you know, there, there, there are certain reasons why we don't know anything about our, our past. I think that may be the case here and there, but I, for one, and, and again, I know that many people will probably not agree with me, but I, for one, um, refuse to accept that, that anything from my past has been hidden from me for my own good. So that forces me, I guess, in a way, to look at a lot of these things face on and I, and I have to say, a lot of the things that I've experienced in the last five years with the, the studies that Jack and I have gone through and continue have not been the most pleasant of things. Um, but, but at the same time, with the other information that we've, we've uh, rediscovered and, and the things that we've practiced and got very familiar with uh, from the past and new things, uh, we've, we've been able to apply those things um, to even the negative things or the harmful things or the unhealthy things and we've been able to um, do do really the same things that that you're discussing with with, with, with regressions and, and the things that people are trying to heal um, we we've, we've spent a lot of time doing that and it's it's like a stairway um, you reach one level with uh, your experiences and your understanding and then you sort of deal with whatever needs to be fixed from that or whatever need you need to assimilate within your own self and your own psyche and then you you sort of gain a strength and, and information and, and new understanding and you take a next step and then you sort of plateau sometimes and and then you sort of take a look around on that level and uh, you learn new things and you make new discoveries and you uh, make new understandings about yourself then again um, you take that that climb up the incline and reach the next level and so on and so on and really that's the process it's been for us and and it's it's never ceases to amaze me because um, we've reached so many understandings about not just ourselves but a lot of the things in society um, that people talk about um, an understanding of the world the way things work and the way things don't work we've also reached understandings of of what we need to change to make things work for ourselves and get more information. Um, one of the things that that always fascinates me is that people um, have a very challenging time sometimes with uh, with the, the subjects we're, we're dealing with here, with accessing you know their own past or with with delving into the right side of their brain and sort of pulling the languages out or information from the ethers, so to speak. Um, um, so instead, our, our modern world is using the internet to get information instead of their own their own mind and their own their own reality, and that that can be a real challenge because then you're depending on someone else. So the perhaps the most important thing to me, and and one of the most important things to Jack, I believe, is the fact that the information um, that we have experienced and that we continue to study and, and, and sort of gather and collect for ourselves. It's unique information in many cases because it's not information that is available publicly on the internet. It's not something that we have to depend on other people to get usually because we're actually getting it from ourselves. We're getting it from our own past. We're getting it from collecting information through the right brain processes and connecting to uh, information streams just like the languages it's an information stream and uh, 
and and really the sky's the limit with that. And I know that the information stream type of scenario and gathering information that way is something that you're very familiar with, Rebecca. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, let's um, um, let's um. Wow. Wow. Just a lot of information in those statements that you just made. Mm -hmm. Um, I have some ideas that we'll carry on. Uh, we'll get together after the show and talk about some of these things. But um, let's let's uh, refocus. Uh, mm -hmm. our attention for a moment on the path um, they, that both of you have come down to achieve to the point of where you're at because when you're on this show where you're you're sharing information about where you're at in the moment and the information that's in the moment but I don't think we've ever actually sat down and listened to since the last time you were on and now some of the rediscoveries you made the path that you got on as far as where you've tripped over and where you're 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 seeing this going as far as into the future so why don't we talk a little bit about that why don't you and Jack um, maybe we can have Jack start because he's had some mm -hmm. time to sit there and think about this um, and then we'll hear from you Tobias there's there you go Jack hmm. All right. your room is full well, something that was your room is full. <laughs> yes, and um, when you are talking about that, you know, it it does really occur to me is that uh, a lot of what we talked about in the last show is how like a lot of the geniuses uh, they listen to their intuition, and we believe that that is the, what made them so creative, like Nikola Tesla, uh, Einstein, uh, Edison, and a lot of them. Uh, Sir Isaac Newton, he was also interested in, and uh, he was a, a Mason, he was interested in occultic things, and a lot of the founding fathers were. But in, in any case, these were very brilliant people, and they obviously had the right side of their brain opened to some degree, and maybe looking at other things than we are, but we don't know, maybe they were. And it's just uh, something that was lost down the, down the line. But what occurs to me, and also what I remember, is that again with these languages you open yourself up a lot to your right brain and when you do that you're getting all these different stimuli like you're seeing colors uh, a lot of the people have communi have communicated is that oh well they went off and they were on this alien ship and they were looking at these gray like aliens and they were getting all these different pictures that would like beam out at their uh, their forehead to the pineal gland and that's that's kind of what we're talking about. Is you have all these different stimuli. You'll see like lights. You'll see visions of things. You'll you'll see people doing things. You'll hear uh, almost disembodied voices at times. But what I'm explaining with that is you have all this information. Here's how I would compare it to: is that in ancient times they had something comparable to the internet, where you could live stream, you know, data, like. You know, short of playing video games to a point, but you can see visions. You could see what someone did during their day at points. You know, pretty much if they were allowing it or if they just weren't paying attention. So you would have this this very kind of intimate intercourse with their energies anyway. Because I was explaining how, like, the information moves up through the millions of your body. So the millions of their body would constantly make contact, and like little packets of information would go back between their bodies. So the involvement in you know the brain and just their entire body, their entire being was resonating to these other people. And what I've noticed and what I've gathered from there is that people do that very much today. And that's that's why I believe that people get so you know that they're they're walking around pretty much in a daze looking at these cell phones and iPads and all these other things. Well well, how can they have so much information? What I believe they're doing is that they're trying to connect through those devices, just like they did in ancient times with crystals and these other, you know, devices, these things of lore, of Atlantis and crystals and, you know, crystal balls and and all this. Well, they're in some ways they're trying to recreate that, and I think, and sometimes it it doesn't actually expand their consciousness as much as they like to, and that's why they get in trouble and they walk out in front of things, but. <laughs> or walk into walls. It's kind of amusing, but interesting correlation. In case, well, I, I believe so. So you have this intercourse of the minds constantly, especially between you know different species, and there'd be all this information coming in. So when when we 
when we do these things, a lot of the times, again, it's almost pure right brains. And when this happens, you know, it touches us and we get glimpses. Uh, like we were discussing before is like, okay, we'll, we'll get a, we'll see someone, we'll get a feeling about them. We think, you know what, I think that they've, they may have had experiences within the certain time period. So then, you know, maybe out of the blue we'll say something in the Anunnaki, like, bosh, trick, not knock, way. Like, oh, what? So, so you can actually gauge their reaction. You know, they might be like, oh, ha, ha, ha. Or they might be like this, like, oh, no. <laughs> but in any case, I mean, depending on the reaction, I mean, you can kind of experiment with them just a little bit and they go, oh, ha, ha, just, you know, playing around. <laughs> but you, you can... But we get these things from them because once we've opened up this intuition side, we can get impressions from people because there's so much energy energy flowing through a person's body. And if you know how to glean that, and most of it is through the right brain, and you open that up, you start getting these experiences, and that leads to knowledge. Just It's the simple knowing of things. And a lot of these, like um, if, you, if you look at like documentaries about Nikola Tesla, like all the things that he invented, I mean, with a lot of them, it's just like, okay, they, they woke up or they were in this mid-dream state, and then they woke up, and then they then they tried to draw out the things that they saw. And lo and behold, you know, a little bit of tweaking, they have a new a new invention. And whether they're connecting to other beings that, that are out there or connecting to themselves from a previous time or even the future, then I would say all that's through the right side of the brain. So you have this giant intergalactic internet that we're always constantly connecting to but if we're only focusing on these cell phones and the iPads and something in our mind says oh well this is what that is we can't quite put it to something so this is like an artificial or synthetic form of that um, not to say that that's not fun and great but there has to be a limit because I think that there's a schism in people's minds thinking oh that's what this is we're moving into the future but they're actually moving into the past so it's like back to the future <laughs> all, all over again I like that that's cute that's good. And I, I have to tell you, Jack, that I think you're spot on with that. I think you're really, really spot on with that. I really, really believe that. Um, and it's it's unfortunate that they, you know, it'd be great if everyone could have a mentor, teacher, or access to even know about shows like this or information like this to help them awaken more fully and understand what it is that they're actually doing. You kind of have to look at the, I look at the information that I access as, what do they call that, the cloud where everything's stored? Well, that's what the whole cosmos is, is, is our cloud drive. You can go in there and pull out whatever. Um, you know, uh, you can find, and just like you talked about the meridians in the body and, and how it's like almost like being able to draw a holographic visual of somebody's day if they're open enough to allow you to see it. Most people don't even know that they're they're projecting. They project an image of who they are and they don't even know that they're doing it because nobody's told them that they probably shouldn't be doing that. Right? And so somebody who's energy sensitive and can read them, you know, has a has a, a an, an advantage and whether they use that in any way whatsoever is is an individual choice, right? But it can be used against you, right? But it can also be if somebody is is full of integrity and they're a helpful person, they can also see something that may be of benefit to them. But I think people really need to understand yeah. that they're projectors as well as receivers. And some, well, absolutely. And something that's really funny to me is, you know, over the years, you know, regaining some of these abilities to do that kind of thing is that in some in some ways it's actually made me made it a little bit harder to talk with people in the beginning at least because I was still figuring out how all of this works but I'll be sitting there talking to someone and I'll be talking about something and then they say something it's like did they really say that I could have sworn that and said oh yeah it's like oh yeah it's like you know I, I like you know Swiss cheese too and just like give you a funny look it's like, what are you talking about and they, they're kind of weirded out because they know that they were thinking about Swiss cheese when they were talking to you about you know going to the car show or something God yes and I, I scare people sometimes doing that <laughs> and they, just, they don't know what to make of it it's like oh ha ha it's like yeah that's, that's great <laughs> do you read oh, yeah, minds so. no not really exactly you know what no, this is this is the same thing and I know you both understand this completely because you're just talking about it but 
I think it would actually creep people out quite a bit if they realized just how much information is around them. Because honestly, in all honesty, I spend a great deal of my time trying to just appear as if I don't know things that I do know because it is <laughs> it's, it, it's right there and it's no different than accessing the the things through your right mind. It's the same it's the same sort of process as as long as you can learn to lock in on certain specific places, whether they're physical or, or not physical, or concepts or or ideas, if you can if you can lock on to those energies and those storage places where they exist um, through your mind and this is a mind sort of technology of the universe then you can you can draw in that information from it as you guys are describing and absolutely I mean with with the emotions and the information that are literally around people I mean we, we do completely understand why why the saying you know oh, what's that dark cloud above your head <laughs> well it's actually quite literal <laughs> It is. And so, you know, when we're talking on these lines, though, this is where what people under need to understand is that when we're talking in, in reference to your languages, that's all out there. Mm -hmm. All that information is out there. And you guys have just done, I, you know, Tobias, I remember years back when you said something to me about it. I mean, I've done some recall on, on some of your, you know, our conversations that we've had um, back and forth. Um, and, and you talked to me about ET languages and I think that was because you, well, that's when you were helping me with the book and I think that's when it started is when you were helping me write the book The Great Revealing mm -hmm. and um, which by the way is for sale on my website because some of the proceeds go back to Mr. Tobias here too to help him with his time and energy that he's put into it so uh, please do support him if nothing else uh, that being said um, you were talking to me a little bit about this, I believe, and I believe that they answered for you, so I don't remember exactly everything. It's just I feel like we've tripped down that one before. And yeah. and so your journey's been years long at this point um, with this. So I, I really want people to know that you and Jack have put in such a tremendous amount of time, energy, research, discovery. Um, you've it's like when you put everything in there and you go, oh wow, look, here's another one of those, here's another one of those. So you've compiled this information and now it's not just a bunch of languages for you. You actually have categories and you have a a structure of where this is, is kind of building to and it, God only knows it's going to really explode a lot here. It's just going to get more and more as people become more and more attuned to that right brain function, learn to open up, because that's the energies that are being supported on this earth at this time, is for this growth, for all of humanity, if anybody just wants to just jump on the bandwagon. So, yeah. that being said, I, I want to throw in that portion of it, even though I wasn't a part of that with your discovery, I was in as much as you were talking to me about it a little bit. Absolutely. So I know how long you have been at this. Absolutely, it's yes. It's wonderful. Yeah, and the, the, it's like, like we were talking about. I mean, getting the information out of these different processes, it just goes one level after one level after one level. So, um, and, and, and exactly, Rebecca, with so many years and so many literally thousands and thousands of hours of experience and studies and research as we have been doing, it is uh, perhaps one of the biggest challenges is sort of getting it out like um, even even in all the hours that we've talked about this on, on on your shows and things like that, it's just we're just beginning to chip at that that iceberg of information. So um, it, it's uh, it's something that's a process, that's for sure. But we really would like to be able to uh, um, give more information um, on how people can can uh, get get into these processes themselves more and more so we just keep going at it um, one of the things that we were talking about um, before and and earlier on in this show is the talk of Shik, and that is the uh, the Anunnaki um, system that actually ran uh, the energy system that actually ran um, their their technologies and I mean physical technologies and in many cases the physical technologies are actually integrated not just with the physical body, um, but with the consciousness itself. 
So all of these things, um, looking from what we've sort of established tonight during the show, um, with uh, information streams and the cloud and, and things like this, um, in the past were not dissimilar, they were similar, however they had the added benefit of an actual power source. And that power source was extremely well used and known, and in fact off of our world today it still is. But on our world um, it's very, uh, well people really don't don't know about it, I guess they, they I, I guess this is why we're talking about it because when you have a power source, literal power through different energies, um, the things that you can access become, well, literally more powerful. It sounds like I'm putting my foot in my mouth, but honestly, it runs the system. So uh, that's something that we're very, very excited about and that we've been approaching with different people and, and sort of trying to get through to, uh, to teach um, this in, in association with the, the path that we've taken all of these years. So, you know, when, when you're looking at all of that, um, I call it the energy grid. You know, that's how I see everything is an energy. Everything becomes an energy. Uh, it's either a sensation, just an understanding. It's almost as if it, each little strand or dot or spot or whatever of energy has its own source and sense of intelligence. Um, it directs itself to whatever its job is, right? Energy is energy. Our body is run off of electrical currents. I mean, you know, that's how they start, start a heart when it goes away is they, they jolt your butt with, a, um, you know, an energy, uh, an electrical shock, and it creates the heart to start again. You know, so it's, it's one energy is just an energy. Um, we have a tendency to try to compartmentalize it, <laughs> as we do. It has to go into a nice, neat little file box for it, you know, for us to understand it. But energy is energy. Um, it's always there and if you look at our society it's been created such that you have to have some gadget some device some physical object that creates energy for you so that you can have lights and you can have heat and you can have air conditioning and you can drive your car etc and so forth it's a source of energy but when we stop and think about it you know we we don't have any remnants in the ground which is part of the great revealing stuff, right? Mm -hmm. We don't have any, any old cars in the ground or, or anything like that where they were driving them around. So obviously they had to be able to, you know, go from one point to another. So what is it? You know, it's physical energy. It could have been magnetics. There's so many things that we've yet to rediscover about who we are and how we got here and how come, you know, we're using, you know, like this technology. They keep laughing. You know, my guides keep laughing, going, oh, my gosh, it's so archaic, you know. And we're thinking, wow, this is the coolest thing since sliced bread, right, you know. It's not, but it is a form of energy. It is a way that we can communicate across the globe, literally, to people all around the world. And it becomes accessible to everybody because it's accepted. But what it, wouldn't it be great to be able to be accepted, to, you know, just to telepathically communicate with each other and have people come and join in in a certain spot and we could be all having this conversation or holographically you know projecting ourselves to a spot for everyone you, you see there's just so many there's boundless stuff here that we can just go down but that being said there's a couple of things we have a question that came in from the audience do you know anything specific about the audience that you feel now I don't know who this was directed to so Jack or Tobias, either one of you have anything that you would like to respond to that question? Yeah, I would like to do that because um, because the, there's two things that come across from the audience right now. So this is a very good example of locking onto an energy field. Um, so if you look at the energy field itself as a whole, um, the the information in the energy field specifically about what we're talking about is is. Um, well, I know exactly what it is. It's an excitement because the information we're actually talking about is uncommon, uncommon information. But it's interesting because there's also an, an element in the energy field of, of. Well, I don't like to say you distrust, say. distrust. But it is a there's an element of distrust, and it's not even that it's aimed at us. It's not aimed at what we're talking about. It's because of their experiences. 
um, with information. So um, we live in a world uh, where there's a lot of different schools of thought and not all of them are accurate, not all of them are powerful, effective, or truthful, um, or truthful schools of thought. So um, just as, as we were talking about earlier when you have to allow yourself to be free to experience, experience things like a child or with abandon, um, people have to be very, very, very aware that they cannot allow the experiences that they have already experienced with, with these types of things um, block them from having new experiences based on new and uncommon information such as we're talking about tonight. Don't let, don't let the past taint you because uh, this is the real deal. Yeah. I have to agree. I, I really agree with that. Very nicely said, I might add. Okay, so um, Jack also, when we left off on that last, Jack was speaking, I don't know if you can pick up uh, that frame of thought process that he was going through, mm -hmm. but about using kind of the investigative way that you guys do things, uh, you know, having, you know, done what you've what you guys have done. We kind of got off on a little tangent there. Do you think you can pick up where you left off? Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. The, well, for, for was Tobias to... as well. Oh, of course. Yep. Go ahead. Go ahead, Jack, first. Well, here also. Yeah, I'll start. All right, so the, the way that we look at, at things is like people will ask us, like, well, have you looked into, like, Zachariah Stitchin's work? Have you looked into... You know Jordan Maxwell and a lot of these other commentators. And it's like, oh yes, we've all looked into them to some degree. But a lot of what we do is we look at things like almost like a private investigator does, because the private investigator isn't necessarily a specific authority. I mean, they're not a doctor, they're uh, they're not forensics or anything else, but they gather a little bit of information from everywhere. And they they do they work a lot more about their intuition because you know they, they they feel a lead as well as they they see where things make logical sense and they go with that, but they're not necessarily within themselves authority on every little bit bitty thing, so then they go with that. So they use their intuition and say, "Well, I feel the story's going this way," and go in and they investigate this way. Well, maybe they'll hire a medium or a psychic because well maybe they don't have that ability or maybe they want to confirm that. Then they'll go that way and they'll keep moving. So our way of, of doing these things is very much based upon ourselves because w we go within ourselves and we go and we, we feel out. Said, so, well, this feels right. I, I feel that I know this. And then we start going in that direction. And eventually we meet other people that talk about things that seem very similar to what we're saying. And then we move forward with that and said, well, okay, well, this makes sense to me. So then we logically say, well, we must be in the right direction. And we, then we keep going in this way. Because a lot of people, sometimes they have almost conflicting views on what they think happened at a certain point in time, which is fine. But what we're, we're going through it is what we feel is right, and we move forward with that. And it's not that we're not researching and doing you know, inductive experiments like the scientific method. You, know, you make these experiments, and then based upon where the, where the studies and the facts go to, that's the way that we're going. We are doing that, but at first we fill out. It's like, well, this is the experiment I want to do. This is the experiment I want to do. So you could have a thousand people within the same field of study doing this over here. We're doing this way over here because this is where we feel. This is where we're comfortable. This is where things make sense to us. And it's not that we don't cross-correlate with them, but we, we want to focus ourselves and up will basically uplift ourselves, see what we're thinking, because that brings fresh ideals to everyone in there. And there may be things that that were intentionally, because in the in the ancient past, you could have had pro propaganda campaigns just as we do now. And a lot of things were intentionally burns, like book burnings and all these things. Well, there will be certain individuals who say, well, they said that this and this happened, but I have this very distinct feelings like, you know, I was there. Uh, what this person said really wasn't what it was. This, you know, this figure, and maybe it was Anubis, or maybe, maybe it was Fakamak, or something like that. It's like, well, he wasn't really this way. He's like, oh, he's not really as he's depicted. And then we move where we're coming at, and then we see if there's anything else that correlates to that. And that may be this little wayward little branch that goes out into where 
few have have dared to travel, but that's where we'll go because that's that's where we feel it. And with me and Tobias, a lot of where we're coming from is usually almost exactly the same. So it's like different depictions, two different eyewitnesses. One was over there, one was over here, and that's a lot of how me and Tobias work with each other, and that's how we do it. So we are familiar with these other people and their and their stories and what they have there. And you know we're 100 percent that it's like you go with that, but we're also going in our direction, and we're, we're our past meet, so it is. And then we move forward, but we're all gathering information and we're all reaching our own maximum potential. Now I'll, I'll let you deliberate on that, Tobias, because I know you want to. Well, yeah, it's exactly the way it is. Um, you know, it's interesting. I met with a few uh, really nice people here in Winnipeg last night, and the the same sort of topic came up: the fact that um, sometimes we specifically avoid looking at information um, with uh, our information that's available specifically because we don't want it to taint what we're doing um, which is getting information from our own sources and, and our own inspections of, of very specific things um, whether that's scientific data or, or you know uh, supernatural data, or whatever it might, be, whatever the case may be. Um, uh, Jack brought up the uh, the name uh, Sitchin. Um, so many people, when it comes to the Anunnaki, are familiar with Sitchin's work. And while I have a, a bit of an idea from things that I've heard, I have specifically not studied the work of Sitchin because I don't want it to taint my own memories and the, my own specific information that I gain um, through the data streams and in our own studies. Um, I don't want that to taint me. And, then, and the other interesting thing is that in so many cases, so many cases, um, what happens in the, some of the scientific sort of uh, communities um, or the certain schools of thought when it, that are wrapped around these subjects is that people get caught in a loop. They literally get caught in a loop where they reach a certain level of understanding or belief within that system or within that subject, and they keep running in a circle, arguing with one another, oh, well, prove this, prove that. This can't be this way. It has to be this way. It's already proven. So they stop looking outside of the box in many cases. Um, so what I'm saying is that specifically, in many cases, we, we literally avoid that. Um, there's lots of things people would like to, to debate with us. Um, that we will say, no, I'm sure I'm not going to deb debate anything, because I know um, from first-hand experience that this is a certain way or whatever and I don't want it to taint or take away from the time we spend on moving forward so that's that's uh, an opinion that's my personal opinion that a lot of people may agree with and then I'm sure there are others out there that wouldn't uh, be too uh, feel too kindly for me saying that but uh, I don't want to waste time um, with things that are already established going in a circle so many times uh, I'd like to look forward and, and progress uh, the studies that we do and the things that uh, we experience. And I think more people should do that, honestly. Well, oh, my goodness, you guys have both said that very eloquently. Um, I, I get the same kind of questions. You know, have you read this person? Have you looked at this? Have you looked at that? No, nope, 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 and no. Mm -hmm. And the reason I don't is because, again, I don't want that information to fuddle up what, you know, is going on around me because I'm trying to find my own way to my information um, and I don't want to be influenced by others although I can say that when I do read um, or listen to other people's information uh, and, and I know that I have to do that especially with some of the guests that I have on and they they have books and I have to read those books in order to be able to talk to them about the material that's in it but when I do that, I have a very specific mindset in which I'm approaching it, which is um, I'm approaching it not to gather information, but to gather content for the purpose of discussion. So it becomes a different focal point in order to try to get that information without allowing that information to filter in and become a part of my own belief systems. It's a challenge, to say the least. Um, so, but I would tell people out there is that, especially with these languages, be, you know, just like you answered the audience, this is an uncommon uh, field. Um, 
a, a, an extremely uncommon field, and I'm couldn't be more excited to have you guys here talking about this. And I'm already looking forward to the next show. As a matter of fact, I've been given like a ton of information as we've been sitting here about what directions to take this in for the purpose of educating uh, the audience with the work that you do. So we'll have to get together in the next day or two talk about that uh, because I think we have a, a quite a few more shows that we could do and having you guys share even more information that becomes not just information but also tools for people to pick up. You've given a lot of information tonight about how they can start working on it on their own but this will get even more so in depth with you guys with helping others and that this community then begins to grow and for those out there that still are looking at this very skeptically or whatever other verb you want to put with that or noun or whatever it is that you're using you know keep an open mind and open mind is 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 how we get new information and it's you know it's it's forward thinkers that that bring the change and look at all the positivity in in the changes some of them aren't so positive of course with anything you can use it either for the better or for the not so good right it's all about intent so I'm really looking forward to both of you coming back on I'm looking forward to you know some more shows in regards to this we've got about nine or ten minutes left um, oh okay I don't know is there any more questions Brian by the way from the audience I guess I didn't ask I didn't even tell people that they could <laughs> could ask questions my bad it's my first show out in months give me a break <laughs> no, <laughs> it's... I forgot anyway um, but we can certainly get into some more the next time that you're here as far as very specifics and you know with a with the last you know 10 minutes left of the show I know you guys had a few more points that you want to make and whatever those are now would be a good time whether you want to bring up some more languages where you're going in the future uh, you know anything that you w would like to have a chance to say before we have to go tonight being that this is a 90 minute show tonight sure um, I, yeah we've we've not had the because we've got off on some amazing little little um, side trips side trips tonight we didn't really get too much into the talk of Schick but that's something that we're both very oh, excited yes. about and we, we will absolutely we'll get more into that as time goes forward it's something that we've begun teaching um, in, in some situations uh, to different people and something that we would like to expand on because these are the energies uh, real energies these are the things that um, have made the uh, technologies and the systems and the lifestyles and the societies of the ancient past so vibrant and so alive and this is what is missing in our society and our lives today um, the vibrancy, the passion, uh, the emotions all of these things, uh, these are the things that really excite us these are the things that we draw on from the past and the information and studies that we've been doing and we implement back into uh, what we're doing right now and these are the things we want desperately for other people to be able to access and use and, and do and understand so um, again, I, as much as we try, these things can't be put into a nutshell, unfortunately. And uh, on the other side of the coin, um, unfortunately, at this point, at least not yet, we can't just download them into people's brains. I would love to do that. It would save my throat a little bit, but um, we look forward to going forward with these things, and I, I really look forward to uh, uh, talking about uh, these things with you, Rebecca, because it's fantastic. <laughs> Thank you. Jack? Jack? Oh yes, uh, one, one of the things that we were going to talk about is the Takashik energy. Yes. We did go in a different direction, but that's perfectly fine. There will be plenty of time because everything we talk about really does build upon itself. So the more we talk about these other things, the more you know the audience will, will get a timeline that will help them understand these other things that we're talking about. Because things like using the Takashik energy is it is a very high-minded thing because you're using a lot more of your mind and a lot of talked about is expanding that right side of your brain with the languages and your personal experiences and how it connects maybe even through social media 
and how we want and we naturally do these things. Well, understanding that and the languages too, because that so, sometimes the languages can put you almost in a in an immediate regression of itself. And knowing these things is going to be pivotal to the Takashik energy. And I'll just I, I will I will attempt to give a nutshell of what we're talking about with the Takashik. Is I've been building up a lot about that, and I know we're strapped on time, but is that like when we're when we're sitting there and you know we're talking to someone, we can get impressions of what they're you know what's truly going on in their mind. It's just you know little glances of what they're thinking about. Maybe they're thinking of a loved one, they're thinking about you know going out on town and having a good time on the weekend because it's Friday, <laughs> and and all these things. And a lot of it is connecting to their auric field, and a lot of this understanding is is opening up the rest of your brain, and getting the language is just an expression of that, and basically feeling the energies as they move through things. This is you know the chi field that they all talk about. You know, they move to sit there and they're trying to be at one with the universe. Well, using the takashik is understanding this information, and then also understanding that information is also energy. So. By, by first getting the information, which is a lot of what language is, period. It's gain, gaining information that we understand on a physical level. Well, the opposite side of that is once you get the information part, you can then, by going into different states of consciousness, because this is all about consciousness and manifestation, you can actually pull like a sub pump. It, it, the energy kind of goes like this, and it just pulls this energy through this information. And it's it's about pulling the energy through that information that is this talk of shik, and that's what powered the ancient Anu devices. And we'll we'll get more on, on to that in another time. Wow! All right, yeah, you and I need to talk for sure. <laughs> you and I need to talk for sure. Yeah, um, we certainly have an awful lot of ground left to cover here, just to get everyone caught up. You know, if I hadn't taken a, a you know extended vacation, joke, joke, um, we'd have been, you know, further along the road, but everything in its right timing, I guess. Um, so here's here's something I would like to uh, do is maybe get you guys scheduled and um, after we get off the air tonight, get you guys scheduled. We'll, we'll, we'll try to make these a little bit more frequent um, based on what your needs are, and what you would like to see, not what I want to see, but what you guys want to show and We'll kind of build on this show. You know, the show is kind of the reopening, reacquaintance again. I do urge everyone to go back and watch the first two shows with both Jack and Tobias um, because there was all kinds of information. Uh, the first show was the background, the, a lot of the history. The second show was a lot of the languages, the back and forth between Jack and Tobias. So you get to hear the language spoken, languages, because they and they gave examples and who they were or where they came from, et cetera, and so forth. Lots and lots of information. So go in there and look that up on Project Camelot TV. And uh, then, you know, come back and listen to this. And I think this show, for some that don't quite follow, will really have a better grasp and a handle on this show for tonight. And then all the future shows will make way more sense. Um, and, and I commend those that, that are not familiar with this territory, you guys are blazing the trail through for showing up here and listening to this show that shows even if they feel like they're skeptic that they're open-minded just by sitting and listening to this so um, I know that you guys appreciate it I certainly appreciate it um, and I just absolutely love the work that you guys are doing because it is about raising the awareness of who we are we've been told that we're not who we are and we're way more than what we've ever given ourselves credit and understanding for. And you guys are really making a huge opening uh, into that. So I commend both of you on, on the tremendous work that you're doing. <clears throat> Pardon me for yourselves and for anybody else that wants to join in. So thank you for that. Any last words either one of you would like to say before we have to let you go? Well, I too, Rebecca. I mean, I thank you very much. Uh, we both do, and also the audience. And then that's such a really, uh, such a really good point you made there. Because um, sometimes it's easy for me, <laughs> for us, to forget that some of the things that we we talk about are 
quite unusual because it's such a part of our own experience in a, in a real everyday life way, right? So I sort of reel my back, reel myself back a little bit there in in what you're expressing, and it's so perfect, and and it makes me very grateful and thankful um, for the people, as you said, that have stuck around and through this show, and and I really, I really, really urge um, everyone to go back and listen to the other two programs that we spent with you. Um, they're two hours each, but I. Um, there is a method behind of behind our madness, and we really did establish a lot of information that has been part of the process for ourselves uh, to get to the things that we've got to today. Um, everything that we've talked about was part of our process, and that means that those processes and understandings are a foundation, a real foundation for anybody else that wants to do these types of things and reestablish these things for themselves. So. Um, it may not seem sometimes as though there's too much of a method to the madness, but it certainly all is a part of this whole continuation, and I look forward to coming back. Thank you. To buy uh, Jack. Mm, yes, and we, we do really appreciate being able to come on here and express this with, with all of you. And the, the nugget of wisdom that I would like to impart is everything that we did is all about being different. And we're being different just by being ourselves. So everyone, you know, people like being with the pack because there's security in the pack. But there's always this guy. He's a black sheep. He goes out and he goes his own way. Maybe he makes it. Maybe he doesn't. But he he was who he was, and he did that well. <laughs> so my my nugget of wisdom is: it dare to be the pioneer. Go out into the wilderness. You know, live the excitement. You know. All of the spice of life, like I've said before, is just you know live your life, you know, just allow yourself to be, and then go wherever that goes because that's exactly what we're doing. You know, me and Tobias, a lot of our experiences coincide with each other, and that what's that's what makes what we do is so productive because we've had similar experiences and we we use that and cultivate that, and we're also very different and we respect that amongst each other. So dare to be pioneers and. Don't allow anyone to try to shut you down. You just keep going on your path. If there's other people on your path, you join up with them, but you don't have to emulate them. Just be everything you can be, and that's the secret behind all of this. Well, I want to thank both of you gentlemen for being here tonight. I can't tell you how much fun and joy and pleasure and information and all of that that I got out of this for myself, and I'm so grateful for the audience, for everyone who showed up tonight. Uh, for my sh first show back. Uh, I will be back in a couple of weeks. Uh, the first week in June I have Nick Redfern joining me, uh, always a wonderful guy, and Marie D. Jones. And uh, hopefully by then I'll have some information on when Jack and Tobias will be back on. Uh, I want each and every one of you to have your remembrances for Memorial Weekend coming up here to remember those who have gone on before. Um, and so for that, you know, uh, please just know that uh, I will have my head bent uh, in thoughts and, and good energy for those who have passed on. And I wish all of you a very safe weekend, and I look forward to having you back uh, in the first week of June. I think it's June 6th or 7th, it's, and then the 9th, I believe. Uh, I'm not sure on the dates. I don't have them in front of me, but it is on my uh, website, journeyswithrebecca.com. Um, I hope to see you all there. And I wish you all a wonderful night. Until we meet again, where will your life's journey lead you? Many blessings, everyone, and good night.